Is anime better than Hollywood blockbusters we know today? As most big western films are continuing to decline in story quality and other things, is this giving Japanese anime the new spotlight? In the last several years, I've read and heard from many voices on the internet about how terrible these bigger films are, but that no one will shut up about the latest season of Attack on Titan including me. How does this affect us as filmmakers? We not only want, but need to study movies and shows in order to improve our craft. However, what's there to study when so many of today's western films follow the same formula over and over, where everything is about franchising, or eye candy, or simple messages, or shoving a personal motive down the viewer's throats, or never taking any risks? These were all the questions I kept asking myself for the longest time. Now that I baited you in with a very big question, let me get straight to the whole point of this video. Western blockbusters suck and anime is bad. Actually, that's not the point. See, I won't lie, it's been frustrating to me looking for good movies or shows to sink my teeth into, but I've only been met with one big disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. You'd think that when studios are pouring just insane amounts of money into these projects and hiring top artists in their profession, that there would be some form of quality. I miss the days when movies were not just good, but great. The type of movies that were universally considered some of the best movies to hit the cinema. Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, Pirates of the Caribbean, the Curse of the Black Pearl, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and the Disney Renaissance films, just to name a few which were arguably the best films at least in the last 50 years, if not the entire history of cinema. Maybe my standard of good movies is just too high because a lot of these movies sure aren't cutting it. So as hungry filmmakers looking to eat up a good story, where else can we turn to? Where on this planet could we possibly look to feed us new ideas for storytelling? Well, guess what? Grab your bags, your popcorn, and an instant ramen because we're looking at the small country of Japan and exploring its most iconic, popular, and biggest medium with the hugest cultural impact. Anime. Anime. anime! anime! Yes, we're talking about anime. It's in the title. Get over it. But, in all seriousness, hear me out. What is this really strange world of 2D Japanese speaking characters which has dominated pretty much most of the Eastern culture and most of the Western culture? Why of all places are we here? Well first, we will look at other mediums in another video, trust me, it's coming, but I want to give you insight into what this medium has brought over in the last 50 years and why you as a filmmaker should be paying attention to it, and hopefully bridge the gap between some of you and anime as it's a medium that has supplied many interesting stories. How I fell into this world was around the time when, just like you, I was going through Netflix looking for anything good to watch and saw nothing but trash. I was frustrated trying to find an amazing gem in the rough. One day, while scrolling through YouTube, I came across a clip from a show which was what got me launched into my first real introduction to anime, Attack on Titan, which was something I never thought would actually be so good. This glorious epic action show filled with mystery, character development, humor, and plot twists that actually make sense. Game of Thrones writers, you could learn a thing or two from this. It was at this moment when I realized, oh shit, anime is pretty good. And from that moment on, my life would be changed forever. So after binging the entirety of Attack of Titan, I felt like giving this medium a try. You may recall that back in early 2020, I started a series where I reacted to the first episode of different anime shows, and you guys seemed to really enjoy that. And from there, I was introduced to more amazing shows, including Death Note, Full Metal Alchemist, my Hero Academia, and many, many more. If you've made it this far into the video, then you must be curious about this medium and culture. Now, while I may not give you the complete rundown, as that would take forever, and there are other people on the internet who could explain it much better, I'll try and cover the important pieces that you should know about what to expect. So, get ready to jump down the rabbit hole. It's going to be a very interesting journey. So, in anime, also known as Japanese animation, you can expect this world to include the usual genres, including action, horror, thriller, romance, comedy, sci-fi, and fantasy. Lots of fantasy. But it even goes further into more unique genre tropes. So, harems. It follows a protagonist, usually a guy, with several girls falling in love for them. You have magical girls, which is exactly what the title means, as you have normal pre-teen or teen girls who accept a contract which grants them powers, a cute outfit, and a special mission. There is the Esekai, where the protagonist either transports or gets reincarnated in another world, usually fantasy, and deals with the mission. The mech shows are shows that have robots piloted by humans, and they basically go and destroy either aliens or other people. 
Next, let's discuss the anime culture. Probably not news, but while the anime world offers amazing stories, most of the time anime is geared towards young men, which means that they like to showcase and exploit a lot of female characters. A lot. This isn't anything new. You can look at several other western films and shows and see how they exploit it. You might have also heard of some fans who refer to a certain character as their waifu or husbando, which is a popular trend among anime characters as it allows them to discuss their favorite character and what makes them attractive in an open, civil conversation. Or it could just turn into raging stormy arguments in the comment section. Now, while I will say that while both anime and western movies are very different, I can't help but point out that, in my humble opinion, Western movies are just not hitting the mark with great stories like they used to. This is kind of one of the reasons why I stopped watching most Western movies and now spend a lot more time consuming anime. You can watch my video on why I even canceled my Netflix account to hear about more of my reasons. But I was just getting sick and tired of the really bad movies with no creativity or passion being produced year after year. So hashtag sorry not sorry, but I've just fallen in love with more anime produced recently than western movies. Like seriously, how is it possible for shows like Konosuba, Girlfriend Girlfriend, and Kaguya-sama Love is War to make me laugh so much more than most comedy shows? Why do I cry more? more at Violet Evergarden than most sob stories? How was I more romantically impacted by quintessential quintuplets and Tonakawa than a lot of these romance wannabes? Why can animal human hybrids look so cool and so cute in anime while Hollywood just makes them look scary? Very scary. Heck, even the opening and closing songs are more of a banger than most songs from America. Plus, to this day, there has not been a single movie or show that has dropped my jaw more than My Hero Academia. Now, while I've been crapping on the Western media while glorifying anime, I do want to make clear that while I do genuinely despise a lot of modern Western movies, there's still plenty that I love and could talk about all day. You know, like some of the X-Men movies are kind of bangers. Also keep in mind that in the anime world, there's still plenty of bad shows. Trust me. There's plenty. The point is that anime as a whole is a unique experience with fresh new takes on stories and genres. This is a gold mine for filmmakers looking for inspiration and possibilities into new stories and stories told through a different culture instead of just watching all the crap poured out of Hollywood. I would highly suggest that you give this world a try. And listen, if you don't want to check it out, that's okay. And if you do, just know that Shizuru Ruka, Sasha, Nino, Yotsuba, Itsuki, Kathal, and Raftalia are best girls, and if you disagree, then you can explain how you're wrong in the comments section. If you want to try out Japanese animation, but are not sure where to start, allow me to offer some suggestions for you to try. At the very least, watch the first three episodes to get an idea if the show is worth continuing. Attack on Titan. After his hometown is destroyed and his mother is killed, young Eren Jaeger vows to cleanse the world of the giant humanoid titans that have brought humanity to the brink of extinction. Violet Evergarden. In the aftermath of a great war, Violet Evergarden, a young female ex-soldier, gets a job at a writer's agency and goes on assignments to create letters that can connect people. Puella Magica Madica. A creature named Cupe offers Madica and Sayaka a wish if they agree to become magical girls and fight abstract beings called witches. However, a magical girl named Homura is, for uncertain reasons, determined to stop this agreement. Kaguya-sama, love is war. The proudly privileged top two students of an elite school each makes it their mission to be the first to extract a confession of love from the other. Death Note, an intelligent high school student goes on a secret crusade to eliminate criminals from the world after discovering a notebook capable of killing anyone whose name is written in it. And finally, Tanikawa, over the moon for you. After recovering from his injuries, Nasa, a high schooler, finds an unexpected visitor knocking on his door who would forever change his world, his wife. Going back to my initial question, is anime better than Hollywood? Well, not only would that be an unfair question as we're talking about two completely different mediums and expectations, but the point isn't which is better, it's about how it impacts you. Anime isn't for everyone, but for me, it was escapism within total escapism. I got to experience stories and characters I would never have been introduced to otherwise, and it helped me give me a lot of inspiration for my writing and creativity. Plus, it gave me a lot of insight into a whole new culture, which is Japan. This video is not sponsored by anyone. I just wanted to talk about it because, as in this world of lollies, tundras, harems, and degenerates, my eyes were open to a whole other resource of stories to experience and to share. And I hope that this has the same impact on you as well.